Hi everyone, welcome to another colouring book review. This is called Lunar Colouring, Embrace the Magic of the Moon. As soon as I saw this cover, I was like, I need to get that book. <laughs> it just looks gorgeous. I love wolves and the mountain ranges and things. And of course, with it being to do with the moon, it's all very mystical, celestial. So yeah, I was all over it. Celebrate the magic of the moon in this inspirational colouring book. Throughout the ages, the moon has been a symbol of change and cycles. From a radiant lunar moth to a tempestuous sea, the original artworks in this book reflect aspects of this stunning celestial body. Each is accompanied by fascinating information and empowering words for you to reflect on. Let these luminous illustrations light up your imagination. So we've got this UV, what do they call it? UV um, line work, I can't remember what they call it now but it's like a shiny embossing. And all of these illustrations are done by Stratton Pearson, Peterson, sorry, Stratton Peterson. And they're an artist. So it's all, you know, done by a person. There's no AI on my channel. As far as I can, there's no AI. So illustrated by Stratton Peterson, here's the introduction. I think it's pretty similar to what we've just read. It's all about the moon and how it's been a source of curiosity and wonder throughout the ages. And um, we're just gonna connect with that energy, I suppose, as we go through this book. So we have the illustration on the right-hand side, the information on the left. This is all about the howling wolves. So this is our cover photograph that you can go ahead and color. And it's all about wolves howling at the moon and why that happens and the connection between the two. We have the phases of the moon to make sure I've got you on the screen. So the moon passes through a cycle of eight lunar phases every 28 days. This affects thoughts and energies as well as providing guidance for the time ahead. And then it explains all of the different phases of the moon. And you see them here in the illustration. It's almost like a mandala. It's very natural, it feels very, what's the word I'm looking for? feels very flowing, very organic. And here's the one that I coloured already. <laughs> it's called the Swirling Tides. So the moon affects the tides here on Earth, as we know. It has a gravity of its own, which pulls oceans towards it, causing high tides. And then it talks a bit more about that as well and how it affects the tides and the seas. So I had a great time colouring this one. I really, really enjoyed it. And um, I don't know what my favourite part of it is. It might be the compass, it might be the water itself. I don't know, but I just had a lot of fun colouring it. So, yes. Um, just before we go on, the paper. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a very thick paper, but it's not, you know, Amazon thin either. It's, it's just a kind of standard thickness of paper. And um, it's bright white. I just have to check out of the light because my light is a warm light. It's bright white paper and like I say, it's decent thickness. But with these all being one sided, apart from the text, that means you can use whatever you like on them without having to sacrifice another image. So look at this, the lunar moth. Gorgeous. There's lots of plants and things integrated in these images as well. This is called the royal cactus, the queen of the night a type of cactus flower that grows in Mexico and South America. Um, it has stunning white blossoms with long pinkish coloured stems that grab onto nearby trees. These stems allow the plant to move along the jungle canopy that it lives in. How incredible. It only blooms once a year, blessing us with its beauty for just a few moonlit hours. By morning, the flower has withered and the moment is over for another year. That's incredible, isn't it? Can you imagine finding one of those? Shadow and light. Yin and yang comes from Chinese philosophy and it's all about the connection as well between the sun and the moon. We've got the cawing crow. The crow moon is the third full moon of the year. It takes its name from the time of year when crows become more active after the harsh winter. I really love colouring books with text on the side that explains things and it teaches you stuff. It's just a really cool way to pick up a bit of knowledge, isn't it? The awesome whole moons. The Moonstruck Mermaid. I was going to colour this one as well. I really was drawn to it. Legends is, legend has it that mermaids can go into a trance light state under a full moon as their connection with both water and lunar cycles makes them uniquely susceptible to its power. Mm, never knew that either. 
the hatchling turtles how cute oh gosh absolutely love a turtle here's the sand dollars as well this is talking about the births of hatching turtles that often occur at full moon when there's more light to help the young find their way isn't that incredible how nature just does these things just knows you know amazing you've got some moon signs so we're talking about the zodiac now aries sagittarius leo mysterious cards this is about tarot cards it's a deck of cards that's been used since the 15th century to gain understanding of the past present and future and then this is of course the moon card it's associated with dreams and the unconscious showing both a wolf and a dog separated by a path it symbolizes the fine line between the tamed civilized side of human nature and the wilder animalistic qualities that are never far away it's also the card of uncertainty and illusion things never being what they seem and it's it's a card of fear as well fear and worry about things just from my personal tarot reading have some more flowers in the, in the fifth full moon of the year the may moon it's sometimes known as the flower moon so all the flowers seen here bloom in may in north america and have particular symbolic meanings we've got violets bluebells lupine indigo and sun drops and we have swooping owls one of the most recognizable nocturnal birds of course a bright moon should impede an owl's hunt it will be spotted more easily illuminating its graceful form for its targets to spot However, barn owls have been known to use the moon to their advantage, reflecting its light off their white wings to stun their prey. The natural world is really, really a wonder, isn't it? I think we all get caught up in human problems and human experiences, and we really need to go back to nature. Because I feel like it's telling us what, what it means to be alive, you know, the, what the world is really about. Buzzing bee. I love bees. One of my favourite things. I love bee things. I've got bee cups and be this and be that. I love it. So the June moon, the sixth full moon of the year, is sometimes known as the honeymoon. It comes from honey being ready to harvest at this time of year. The custom of the honeymoon after newlyweds marry may also be traced back to this full moon because June was the traditional month for weddings, meaning this moon is associated with love and sweetness. I think my parents were married in June, but they're not together anymore. So <laughs> that, that didn't quite work out. But um, yeah, June, I know that quite a few people got married in June. I think my husband had his first marriage in June as well. I think it's a, um, I think it is a very popular month, isn't it? I'm sure a lot of you know people who got married in June. So we've got a gorgeous clock with all the phases of the moon around it. There's some beautiful illustrations in here. And... Again, it's, it's from a human artist. It, it can really be appreciated, you know, with all the AI that's been going on. It's so nice to see work from some from a different human artist as well. I hadn't heard of Stratton before this. Look at this. I love a stag. Another one of my favourite animals is a stag. Somebody asked me the other day what my favourite animal was and I said lion, which it is. I love lions, but I also forgot to mention stags. They hold a special place for me i live in nottinghamshire and in the center of nottingham we have a park called woolerton park and there are stags on there that live there year round and i've been very close to them before you're not supposed to get too close because obviously they're very dangerous animals as well when they're in rut but um i've been quite close to them and i've taken photographs of them as well i absolutely love stags we have flying lanterns the Lunar New Year, celebrated in many Asian countries, begins with the first new moon of the lunar calendar and ends with the first full moon about 15 days later. And then we have the Lantern Festival as part of the celebrations. We've got the air moon signs, which is, I'm an air sign, I'm a Gemini. Geminis want to know about as much about the world as possible and thirst for stimulation from many different sources to avoid boredom. That's me, to a T, in a nutshell, <laughs> that's me. I do get bored very easily and I want to know everything about everything. So we've got one of the bat here. 
Bats are creatures of the night, of course, often emerging under the cover of darkness. They swoop across the skies, small winged silhouettes against a glowing moon. I often see bats here. If I sit on the um, back garden during twilight, you can just see a very quick flicker of a little black, little black flicker in the sky. And um, I've never seen one close up though. Got the mighty sturgeon. So the August moon is also known as the sturgeon moon. Uh, found in fresh water, particularly in the lakes and rivers of North America, these fish provided an important source of food, particularly in August when they were the most abundant. So again, we're just finding out little, little bits of knowledge, little tidbits. Evening primrose flowers. Their beautiful yellow petals bloom at night. The luminous quarters. These moons appear in the third and seventh positions of the lunar cycle when the cycle is both one quarter and three quarters complete. They are simply referred to as half moons, showing their perfect semicircles that beautifully balance out light and darkness. Then we've got a gorgeous harvest page. This is one that I will certainly be colouring in autumn this year because I feel I just feel that proper autumny connection with this page, obviously. Um, it's the September moon, the corn moon, taking inspiration from the time of year when corn is harvested and other autumn crops such as pumpkins, apples and pears are also ready to be picked. So September is also associated with the harvest moon. The moon is one that falls closest to the autumnal equinox, a biannual occurrence that happens when the sun is directly above the equator. We have the rabbit. The rabbit symbolises rebirth. The glimmering stone, the moonstone gem, which emits silvery shimmery light, is thought to challenge the energy of the moon. I think I have some moonstone somewhere. The rainbow has long been a symbol of new beginnings, the bright colours after the rain representing positivity, as well as beauty arising from adversity. So we have the rainbow around the moonstone and then these beautiful daffodils, one of the first flowers to bloom after the cold of winter. So it's all about fresh starts, this page. And we've got some travelling birds. These are called night jars, symbolising mystery and wisdom. They're often thought to provide revelations to those who encounter them. I've never heard of night jars. The deadly bow and arrow. The October moon, the 10th full moon of the year, is often called the hunter's moon. So this was a time to prepare for the winter months ahead. So game would be hunted and meat would be prepared and stored. So the elegant moon design here combines with the bow and arrow to create a weapon that's both beautiful and lethal. It is a symbol of what humans must do to ensure their own survival when faced with the impending cruelty of the elements. We have another beautiful wolf. This is talking about a plant called the werewolf plant, which produces a sugary liquid on nights where there is a full moon. It does this when the moon is at its brightest and the light will cause reflections. The reflections catch on the attention of the pollen carrying insects who will land on it. Just as in mythological lore, a bitten man changes into a wolf under the full moon. Um, this undergoes its own transformation when the night is at its brightest. I love the research that's been done and put into this book. Then we've got the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. The glowing gibbuses, the waxing and waning gibbuses appear in the fourth and sixth positions of the lunar cycle. This is a period of intense illumination when the moon's light is at its brightest. The resourceful beaver, the beaver moon is the 11th full moon of the year in November. It is thought that beavers became particularly active in November, assembling their winter dams out of mud, sticks and leaves. And of course they are nocturnal, so they rely on the light of the moon to accomplish this. We've got a gorgeous telescope page. For thousands of years, humans have cast their gaze skywards to the moon, stars and planets. Taking a telescope to a quiet spot beyond the reaches of city lights and pollution can be an effective form of meditation as well as exploration. And we have a powerful potion here. Many believe in the power of the moon water. Water is infused with crystals or flowers and left out under the full moon to absorb its energies. And you have usually amethyst, dandelion, rosemary and lavender. Sounds like something I'd like to give a go. Never heard of that before. I'm learning a lot in this book. And we have the navigator beetle. Dung beetles have an incredibly advanced internal navigation system. They rely on light to steer their dung balls in a straight line, which is by far the most efficient way of transporting them. 
While most dung beetles use the sun, nocturnal dung beetles use moonlight and the orientation of the light waves from the moon. And this helps them work out where to go. We have the steadfast oak tree. The last full moon of the year, the December moon, is sometimes known as the oak moon. And in the depths of winter, comfort can be taken from the oak tree. Its constant presence in the landscape is a sign that no matter what external conditions there are, internal fortitude can, be, can remain. And then we have another tarot card here, the High Priestess. The, um, the High Priestess is a card of secrets, things not being as they seem, and trusting your gut feelings. We have the Ornate Locket. The moon is often associated with the subconscious mind, the part of ourselves that we're unaware of. Um, there is always an element of the moon that remains hidden in shadows, dark and unknowable. So that hidden part is represented here in the form of a locket. Beautiful, decorative and containing something of significance, the secret contents of this piece of jewellery symbolise this buried part of the self which is present in us all. The blue moon, the phase once in a blue moon, refers to an event that rarely happens and has its origins in astronomy. There are usually 12 full moons in the calendar, one a month. However, each lunar cycle is roughly 29 and a half days, so 354 days for 12 moons. As there are 365 days in a year, every two and a half years we get a 13th full moon known as a blue moon. So they aren't blue in colour, but volcanic eruptions can cause the moon to actually look blue. In these rare instances, plumes of ash rise and scatter red light, allowing other colours to pass. This means that blue can be seen instead. These beautiful moons are eerie to witness, associated with natural disruption and the changes it can cause. And there you are. That's just a little bit of testing that I was doing there. <laughs> so this is a really like comprehensive book. It's, it's got a lot of pages, a lot of illustrations and a lot of knowledge uh, included in it. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this book. There's so many different themes as well. Lots and lots of different animals, lots of naturalistic things. Um, yeah, I think this is this is one that seems to have been released and gone by without much fanfare. But it's a bit of an underrated gem, I think. So I'll be leaving a link in the description of where you can buy this book. And um, again, I would just love to know what you think. It's a book that I was very excited to come across. And as I say, I haven't heard many people talk about it. So do let me know your thoughts. Uh, and I'm, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.